And so what happens now? He goes to the Russians and is that where we lose track of him for, for, for a time or he comes back to Budapest? Or is that when the Russians imprison him, when he goes out to meet them? No, no not directly. Uh, a few days later, there is an arrest uh, formulated in Moscow and sent to the, the Budapest troops. Uh, so in the beginning, he is received uh, uh, in a nice way. Uh, and he is also, of course, let back. He, they let him go back to Budapest to get his things. Because what he first of all has demanded is that he wanted to see the, the, the general Malinowski who is at the time in Debrecen in the eastern part of Hungary. And he wanted to see him to present his plans. And it has to go to be a, a quick decision to take him there. So uh, they let him, uh, they, I guess they just let him understand that they would take him to Malinowski and he returned to his uh, uh, offices in Budapest and met his uh, uh, collaborators and said goodbye, I'm going to, to Debrecen to meet with Malinowski. So at what time uh, Raul Wallenberg understood that he in fact was under arrest and taken to Moscow, we don't know. During the train trip to, to Moscow, he was in a very nice part of the, the train, first class. He had a good, good meals. They stepped out and went to restaurants and they walked through Moscow to the Lubyanka prison. So in the worst case, maybe it was not until the doors shut behind him that he understood that this is not going well. And this is still before the liberation of Budapest, where you have, as you mentioned before, the central ghetto, and then you have thousands of Jews hiding in the apartments that Wallenberg and his team had set up with their protective passes. This is all happening before liberation? Uh, this is, uh, we are talking about January, in the middle of January 1945. So Budapest is still a place uh, very much in the middle of war. Uh, uh, Raoul Wallenberg ended up in Moscow the 6th of uh, February 1945. So uh, that's, that's when we lose track of him. <laughs>